The novel, The Sun Also Rises, was first published in 1926. It was a revolutionary literary event. It made Hemingway famous. Hemingway had a deceptively simple writing style. He used understatement, minimal description, few adjectives, rhythmic repetition, and parataxis. Parataxis is a style that uses few or no coordinating or subordinating conjunctions. With fewer joining words, parataxis gives the reader the feeling that everything is happening at the same time. It emphasizes the sensation that the protagonist is living in the moment. The Sun Also Rises inspired many young writers to see it as the model for the modern novel. It was fascinating how such a seemingly simple form could pack so much emotion. It changed writing, it changed the art form. The novel inspired many young women across America to wear their hair short and mimic Brett's fashion and behavior. Few novels had such a strong cultural impact. Its influence is still felt to this day. The novel is the best description of Americans and Europeans living in Paris after the devastation of World War I. The novel's second act is their trip to Pamplona, where they watched bullfights and drank a lot of wine. The third act is Jake Barnes cleaning up the mess. There is also a lot of existential questions swimming beneath the surface. The best example of Hemingway's minimalism is the end of the novel when Jake responds to Brett saying, isn't it pretty to think so? This is the last line and a key point, but his emotions are not described. So, what is Jake feeling? Sarcasm, bitterness, ennui, defeat, Here's a beautiful woman telling him she loves him, yet she seems to be sleeping with everyone but him. He just drank a number of bottles of red wine to wash away his thoughts and feelings, while she pleads with him not to get drunk. To complete the scene and the novel, we have to project what we are feeling into the moment. Hemingway wrote in a collection of observations, I sometimes think my style is suggestive rather than direct as the reader must often use their imagination. To understand this is to understand Hemingway's skill as a writer. Hemingway had been searching for an idea for a novel. He was aware that to make the impact he wanted to make as a writer, he had to write a novel that was both artistic and accessible to the average reader. Then Hemingway went to the fiesta in Pamplona and the emotional explosion that happened there gave Hemingway the last piece of the puzzle. He now had the material he needed to write his novel. After the fiesta, Hemingway and his wife went to Madrid. On July 21, 1925, he began writing at a furious pace. He did not stop until he finished the first draft. It took him two months. He let it simmer, then began writing revisions. Scribner's published the novel a little more than a year after Hemingway completed the first draft. The book sold 19,000 copies in the first six months. Hemingway became a minor celebrity. The book received sparkling reviews. The New York Herald Tribune said, If there is better dialogue written today, I don't know where to find it. Donald Ogden Stewart, who had been there in Pamplona and was used by Hemingway as a partial composite for one of the characters, commented that the book so accurately described the events that took place that it seemed little more than a skillful travelogue. Not all reviews were positive. Some saw it as newspaper writing. Others saw it more as magazine writing, but not artistic writing. However, I remember when I read the novel for the first time, it lit up my brain. I saw language in a brand new way. Who knew one could write that way? It was a totally unique experience. I thought about the book a lot because it evoked such strong feelings. I came to understand that my reaction was due to Hemingway's style of parataxis, minimalism, and understatement. It was a popular novel with brilliant dialogue and Hollywood producers felt it would make a great movie. 
the movie rights sold for $10,000 in 1929. That's about $140,000 in today's money. 30 years later, Daryl Zanuck acquired the rights and started production on the film. Hemingway insisted Ava Gardner play the part of Brett. Zanuck conceded, but complained that waiting for her delayed the production and he could no longer shoot in Pamplona. He had to create sets in Mexico. Then Hemingway, Ava Gardner, and Tyrone Power wanted Robert Evans replaced. He was the actor playing the Spanish bullfighter. Zanuck listened to their complaints and then said no, the kid stays. After Hemingway attended a screening of the film, he walked out before it was over and told the press, it was pretty disappointing and that's being generous. Zanuck responded saying, what a lousy thing to do, to hurt publicity for the film, even before the first reviews are out. However, the film had problems. The opening exposition was poorly conceived. The narrator in the opening voiceover said that the year was 1922, when it was clearly 1925. That's not a huge mistake, but it speaks to an underlying problem. The script writers were not paying attention to evident and obvious detail. Hemingway was a master of subtext and understatement, but much of the added writing for the film was blatantly on the nose. Zanuck said he treated Hemingway's novel like scripture. That's not exactly true. His writers added backstory and exposition that seemed more like filler. They also removed a lot of his subtext. I have to assume they did this because they believed the audience would not understand the story otherwise. The experience could not have been pleasant for Hemingway, but it could not have been that unpleasant either because he continued selling his work to Hollywood. Many recognized The Sun Also Rises as Hemingway's greatest work and refer to it as his most important novel. It was and is a universally acclaimed masterpiece.